for me, AI enters this realm that's very familiar with us in the podcast where it's new and it's accelerated in progress so fast that so many people don't know enough about it. And so it looks like magic. While we love things like Harry Potter and it would be really cool if magic existed, the last thing we want to do is for something scientific to be magic because that's exactly when people start lying about it. So for us, we wanted to dive into AI and understand it better because we wanted to be able to explain it. So this has kind of been a long time coming, at least for us, but we wanted to understand AI at a base level so that we could get into it. Now, AI has been around in, in my discussion for a long time because Elon Musk was a very, very strong proponent against pushing AI back in the day. He gave up on that fight, and then now, obviously, with Tesla and the Tesla bots and everything that they're doing with their AI systems, um, he has quickly become a an expert in it. For me, I really started jumping into a lot of these tools. Uh, ChatGPT, when it first came out, I was fascinated by it, but it wasn't something I really felt like I found a use for. And then Gary Vee was talking about it, and that's kind of where I jumped in and finally was like, all right, we've got to figure this out. Now, for years now here in the podcast, we've been trying to figure out ways to free up time from all of the effort that it takes to put together an episode and to make it scientifically accurate, to throw in some personality, and to make it a conversation, right? We don't, the, the thing that we try to have this be is engaging. When we first started, podcasts were basically like TED Talks or like lectures, and it's really grown a lot. I mean, if you go back to one of those episodes, please don't. But if you do, that's, we were trying to figure out how to, how to communicate science and make it interesting and engaging. So I really would have loved to have been able to have hired, you know, someone who could help me edit, because who really wants to listen to yourself uh, over and over again constantly, and then getting critical about how you sound and <laughs> what you say, uh, it's a little crazy. But, you know, uh, if you don't have the money for it, uh, you know, uh, so many podcasts have started and stopped because their expenses outgrew what they could actually bring in. And I mean, how many episodes went under a hundred? How, how many podcasts went under a hundred episodes, right? So I adjusted and found a way to do the podcast in a format that would be engaging, listenable, watchable. Um, but it was also something I could do while working a full-time job and having a life, right? So for us, we always were looking for that partner to add on to the team here. Uh, we didn't have enough coming in to hire a, a human. So eventually, AI ended up becoming uh, a partner for us. Uh, some Something, uh, someone, something. Uh, I guess we'll figure that out in the future here. We, we have gained so much time back. And so for us how we see AI is right now how it exists. Right now, AI is there to help enable individuals to do more than they're capable of doing themselves, specifically by adding in tools, AI tools, that are able not to replace the human being, but to replace the tasks that the human being is hindered by. So for me, the tools that we're going to talk about in just a second are all things that I've used because they are helpful to, the, to what I am doing. And I know a lot of people who are super into AI. The first thing that we talk about whenever they know that I'm into space and podcasting is you should record your voice, make a prompt, and then it can do the entire podcast for you. You'd never have to record another episode and the and the podcast would just reveal itself. You, you could just sit back and do something else. Now, to us, that is the least interesting thing I would want to do. This podcast is a creative endeavor. It's a human endeavor. And while I love the the, the fact that that is even kind of possible today, that doesn't interest me at all. So unlike many of the AI purists and enthusiasts, the way that I use AI is literally to enable myself to do more by giving the AI or finding AI that's doing the things that are either taking up my time that are preventing me from getting to this point or tools that free me up to spend more time in that creative zone. Because for us, flow state, whatever you want it to be called, that is the thing we're looking to access. 
Uh, and look, I work a full-time job as an engineer, so it's not like I have this entire day to myself. I have to be very disciplined and very efficient in the time that I have to do the things that I'm going to do. So AI has returned to me so much of my week that it has quite literally changed my life. So uh, for me, I am excited to share this, but it will not be the typical marketing point of, hey, look at all the amazing things that AI can do. I do not think that AI should be in everything. There's definitely the chance that it could take a lot of jobs and, and stuff like that, but that's why it's so important at this junction point in where AI is that you understand it enough to realize that one day there may be an AI that may help you. And this introducing that and understanding that could be the difference between you having a job or not having a job, but more specifically, potentially having a great life versus having a life in which you're unable to think for yourself, do for yourself, uh, your self-reliance goes out the door. So we are anti-losing your self-reliance. We are anti-losing your humanity. We want to use AI tools that help and enable that and help you become an even bigger part of the human species here. So we're looking for AI partners in our humanity, not to replace it. I guess we could have saved a lot of time by just saying that, but that's, that's the story. That's how we think about it. 